Now, another thing that I've heard a lot of is, is that some people feel as though that, well, this is really just a way to help out insurance companies, that we're really helping their bottom line, we're really not helping ourselves. You know, I think um, certainly we'd like to see as strong regulation in the insurance market as possible, and probably mm -hmm. there could be stronger reforms. Um, but I do think some huge first steps are taken, like, as I mentioned, the denial of pre-existing conditions, not allowing rescission, requiring them to do what they call, as I mentioned, adjusted community ratings so that they can't ha charge people, you know, crazily different premiums for the same thing. It also will require what they refer to as a medical loss ratio, which essentially just mm -hmm. means when you take in the premiums insurance company, you need to spend in the House bill, I think it's 85 percent of mm -hmm. what you take in on actually paying medical claims um, oh, how so that there's less of okay. a uh, incentive, I think, to deny claims and that you could only use the rest for marketing and overhead and the, you know, sizable salaries that um, many insurance executives get. And, and it's lower at the moment. The medical loss ratio is more like, I've heard anywhere from the 70s to then early, like the low 80s. So this okay. would... Um, put more money that people are paying in into actually being able to pay for their actual care. That I think is a really key, um, it's not actually in the Senate bill right now, but there's an amendment that I understand will be offered to, to make that a 90%. So we'll see, I think that's an important piece that I'd like to see in the final bill. So there are, very, there are strong insurance reforms in there. I understand how pe why people might think um, they're not as strong as they'd like to see, because certainly when you're talking about the uninsured population, that's 45 million new customers yes. um, for insurance companies. When you couple that with the individual mandate, mm -hmm. um, that will require all of us to have coverage. Um, but overall, I still think that the bills where they are in the House and the Senate are, are such a huge, important step forward that... It's in the right direction. It's absolutely in the right direction. Um, mm -hmm. And I think we just have to be careful that we're... we're starting with some strong reforms, that mm -hmm. when uh, we create an individual mandate, particularly as low-income advocates, we have mm -hmm. a concern about requiring people to purchase coverage, but as long as we have some real affordability provisions, like those tax credits in the exchange, mm -hmm. um, that will really make it accessible to people, then, then I think it's probably fair, and it's what, um, you know, it's the way we might need to structure it to move forward as we need to move forward with this. That would be great. Well, we have been talking with Jennifer Carter today, and she is the Health Care Access Director with Nebraska Appleseed, and we've been talking about health care reform. And as you can tell, we probably could do another show or two on <laughs> this. But thank you for watching. Um, the Lancaster County Democrats Watchful Citizens Show. I want to encourage people to uh, attend monthly meetings with the, the Lincoln um, Lancaster Democrats. We usually meet at the uh, Communication Workers Hall of America, which is about uh, 25th in N Streets, the third Tuesday of every month at 7 p.m. You can come and meet all sorts of exciting um, people who are very active. Uh, there's lots of fun things to do. There's lots of opportunities to learn more about important issues like health care reform. And we have a website, and we hope that you check us out there. And I'm sure that you could go and check out Nebraska Appleseed's yeah. website and learn more about this issue. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for oh, coming. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate okay. it.